Thanks, Mike. This is Doug Davis back with another Your Black Business. Happy Black History Month. Today, we're talking to Dennis Schultz, Executive Director of Blacks in Technology Foundation, founded in 2008 and established in 2012. Blacks in Technology is a global platform for black people in technology. Dennis, welcome back to Your Black Business, sir. Hi, thanks, Doug. Thanks for having me. Share with us, if you can, sir, the many achievements that African Americans have made in technology in this country and abroad. There's many, but a lot of folks only know the movie Hidden Figures and the women featured there, which uh, is is great for NASA. But in general, people don't know the contributions of Black technology-specific engineers. So there's folks like uh, Frank Green. Uh, who was the first black technologist, uh, if you will. He developed a high-speed semiconductor, uh, you know, and that was uh, back in um, the 60s. So he did that with Fairchild Computers. Explain, if you can, uh, what actually is a semiconductor and how was that used today in technology? Absolutely. So when you think about modern-day computing, you think of, you know, a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor, and a central processing unit or the computer itself. Well, the computer, the semiconductor, is basically the core of the brain of modern computing. So without the semiconductor technology, there will be no computers, modern day personal computers, there will be no cell phones, there will be no modern electronics of any kind that has to um, use central processing uh, to compute anything. (laughs) So uh, he is uh, truly a pioneer uh, in in the field and uh, definitely should um, be recognized uh, for the work he did with uh, with Fairchild Fairchild Semiconductor uh, back in the day. Another person I want to highlight is uh, Marianne Croak. Uh, So Marianne um, was um, uh, an unsung hero for developing voice over IP or, or VoIP. Uh, and basically, that allows you to communicate verbally over the Internet. Uh, so you think of, you know, any, uh, you know, uh, cell communication uh, right now, you know, that is kind of developed as a result of VoIP. Uh, so broadband communication uh, for, you know, voice like Zoom or Teams or any of these um, uh, virtual uh, communication platforms that we use now or, you know, have been become snap with the pandemic. Um, that is Marianne Croak's work. Amazing. If you can go into the nuts and bolts of your organization and how it affects the black community. Yeah. So blacks and technology as an organization is uh, the largest community of black technologists globally. Uh, we support and promote the inclusion of people of African descent, uh, in tech, we want to make sure that there's equity for anyone who's pursuing a career, and we help them with resources to not only get into tech, but also advance their career once they're in. So think of uh, training and certification. Um, most people can start a career in tech without a four-year college degree in computer science. Uh, there are a number of uh, programs that will train you from very little experience or if you have transferable skills from another industry or another job, uh, you can apply those to tech uh, and increase your uh, likelihood of success. We also provide soft skills support for things like resume reviews or interview prep. Uh, We also have mentorship programs. Uh, A number of um, ways that we can help and support uh, the Black community And the goal ultimately is to help people increase their station in life through a technology career. There are so many people who could advance themselves or are working multiple jobs or, you know, maybe they're um, unemployed and trying to figure out what their next move is going to be. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars or go into debt to, you know, get a degree in order to change your direction. Some of these programs that we offer are free. Uh, Some of them are uh, highly discounted programs for training and certifications. For people that may be in a service-oriented type of job or career, uh, or someone, let's say, who works at a fast food restaurant, maybe a manager of a particular restaurant or something, but 
you know, wants to get out and make a lot more money, how would their skills be able to transfer over into a tech job? Particularly because we're hearing about robots and AI taking over these type of positions. Again, how would they be able to transfer over into tech? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. It really depends on what your interests are and where your strengths lie. What you do in those situations is you try to get ahead of um, what it is that um, the role needs. So for service work and specifically for fast food restaurants, I think the logical play is to figure out how you position yourself as someone who can, you know, manage and understand how to uh, maintain the hardware, uh, the robotics, the, you know, computers. And that is something that, you know, the the larger chains are training their employees to do. Um, but you can also do that independently. You know, you don't have to wait for, you know, um, a large multinational to say, this is what we want to train you to do. You can get ahead of it. Um, there are programs that we have in place right now. In fact, we have a partnership with um, an organization called Udacity. Udacity provides on-demand training for a number of skills, um, whether it be software engineering or autonomous vehicles or um, AI and machine learning, you can start off with little or no experience and get what they call nano degrees. These are degrees that you can earn in four to six months of um, training at your own pace. So these are self-paced. You can work uh, at your leisure. You can work a full-time job or go to school full-time and still work on these programs, um, you know, two to three hours a night, five days a week and complete in six months. And when you do, they'll have you ready to work in that respective field. So you don't have to spend years of study. You don't have to dedicate your time fully. You can work on it part-time and actually um, be prepared for that job of the future. My name is Doug Davis, and we're talking to Dennis Schultz, Executive Director of Blacks in Technology Foundation. What's your website? Sure. It's blacksintechnology.org. That's B-L-A-C-K-S. I N technology dot org. What are some of the new trends in career opportunities in technology? I keep hearing about cybersecurity. I, absolutely. And, and, you know, not to uh, pick on cybersecurity, but every technology discipline is going to be a relatively good paying job if you are focused on a specific skill. Um, I, can attest personally uh, that, you know, you don't have to be very technical in order to have a, a strong career in the technology industry. Uh, but the, specifically around cybersecurity, you can either be uh, someone responsible just for governance. So if you know the rules and regulations around cybersecurity, you're very valuable to a tech organization. You don't have to know anything about technology right. and can make a really good um, living, you know, uh, doing that. Uh, but there's also things like product and project management. There's sales and customer success or customer service, where which are also non-technical. And then on a technical side, you have everything from design and um, user experience to um, data science and analytics where you can, you know, basically make a living off of, you know, interpreting data or managing the large data sets. There's also uh, cloud and DevOps where basically you're managing um, servers virtually. Uh, there's also, you know, machine learning and, and AI, which is hot, re uh, really hot right now. And uh, there's opportunities to learn how to manipulate, um, you know, data structures for learning. There's so much software out there that, you know, people think you have to develop everything from scratch. We really don't. There's a lot of tools that are available where you just have to be able to manipulate the tools and the, let the computers and the software do the work for you, but have the human component to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. The problem solver is really what these companies are looking for. They're looking for you to bring your humanity to um, their situation in whatever role you're uh, going to take on. Does your organization help people find the best suited job for their skills? Sure. So there's a few different options available. On the Blacks and Technology website, we do link to 
some third party organizations like CompTIA um, who will provide you with um, uh, assessments and tools to kind of give you some direction. Like if you really don't know if you want to go into cybersecurity or cloud, for example, if you're really at the beginning stages of your research, um, we can kind of help narrow that down for you. Now, once you've made the determination on a specialization and you say, okay, well, I think I like this and want to kind of tip your toes in, there are a number of free programs that we offer um, that you can take and, you know, more or less audit a class, if you will. So you can take a class for free, say, in a cybersecurity program. And if you think it's to your liking, you know, you can continue on with it. If you don't, fine, you can drop it and uh, open that um, slot up or that scholarship up to someone else. We have partnerships with some um, companies directly. So if they have a specific software technology they want you to learn, they'll offer it up to our members for free. But then we have programs um, that are multifaceted. So organizations like Google have multiple programs that you can uh, sign into and train on under Coursera as well as Meta. So uh, Meta has marketing and um, uh, web development, application development uh, case courses that you can take, uh, for example. And then Udacity has dozens of different courses that you can, can uh, be considered for. And it really depends on, like I say, your desire and willingness to learn. But we have the resources available for you. Of course, we know it's Black History Month, but it's also Black Tech Month. Uh, Your organization, what are you guys doing to promote this and to help out Black tech professionals? So for this year, uh, we have a new program for startup founders that we're launching. And this is a pre-accelerator program. So if you have an idea for a a tech-related business, you can join our program. We will give you the skills necessary in order to get into one of the premier accelerator programs. And there are a handful of companies that are selected into these cohort programs every year, and it's very competitive. So what we do is we try to make sure that you're competitive when you approach these programs, because once you get in, there's opportunities for funding. There's opportunities for business development. We want to give our folks a fighting chance as opposed to, you know, going in blind. Uh, we'll give them some guidance. So powerful. What kind of upcoming events do you have for the rest of the year? Uh, the first thing I'll say is if you're interested in any Blacks and Technology, technology event, please go to the website, uh, register as a member, and you'll start to receive information in your in- email inbox uh, with upcoming events for your region. The things that I'm most excited about this year is we have a new gaming platform that we're going to be launching to get more uh, young people into the technology mindset. Uh, So the gaming platform is going to be our Trojan horse in discussing technology careers at an early age. Uh, So that's going to be launching in late February, early March. Uh, We also have our annual conference that We just secured our um, venue for, it's gonna be in Nashville at the JW Marriott, and that's gonna be September 5th through the 7th. Yeah, we're gonna have, wow, I would say maybe two dozen or so events between now and the end of the month. So definitely check back on the website for uh, those specific events for your region. And again, that website is blacksintechnology.org. You're listening to Your Black Business. My name is Doug Davis. Dennis Schultz, Executive Director of Blacks in Technology Foundation. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. You're listening to the Black Information Network and the Black Perspective.